to tell you something that I've been saying this for eternity, that human beings ought not be mascots. Now, I've like this is not something that I've ever thought would I would distinguish between, okay, well, Redskins is a slur, but Indians isn't a slur. No, human beings ought not be mascots. Um, and the only exception to that are occupations. I don't mind occupations. You want to be the cowboys or, or you know, the boiler makers or whatever, fine. Human beings ought not be mascots, ever, ever. It's not complicated, people. It's disrespectful. Um, and I, I just, I think that I, I agree and I'm very pleased that more people are catching on to this. Um, I am not probably typical. I love all things indigenous in all continents. Like I'm just one of those people that think of anything indigenous is closer to the center of the earth. And so I just prefer it. Like I like it. And I wanted to share with you something that happened a couple of years ago because a couple of members of the Lakota Sioux came down here and did a nonviolence resistance training at FIU campus, which is down here in North Miami. And I went to it and it was just so amazing. And I loved it so much. And one of the coolest things that I took from it, and it's interesting because it's something I've always done, but I never referred to it as this way. But one of the things that the, that the Sioux went through was how to be, how to be a good relative, how to be a good relative. And there were certain things. And one of those things was lending your privilege. And I, I think of that pretty much every day. And that is something that really spoke to me. And I was very appreciative of hearing it that way. And I try to spread that as much as I can. Um, but I could not be happier that there wouldn't, like, I, I like all things indigenous. So for me, it's all good. Like whatever it is you guys are doing in Niagara Falls is good. Um, and in general, vulnerable communities need our help. It's that it's really very basic um, and vulnerable communities are communities that get screwed over in terms of not getting clean water, whether it's black people in Flint, Michigan or indigenous people having pipelines drilled through their land. It's taking advantage of vulnerable people and it's an injustice and it's unacceptable. I think that's a great transition, Chase, to, to, to just do a refresher of what went on at Standing Rock, what uh, was going on with the Dakota Access Pipeline the absolute desecration of your sacred land, uh, all for the purpose of profit for big oil, nothing more, nothing less. And obviously not much has changed since then. Uh, and so certainly if you can, you know, just do a quick refresher of what that experience was like and more or less yeah. where we stand today with protecting native land. Thank you for that. And it's really, I appreciate hearing about Bayou Bridge because Indigenous nations, we don't know how long we've been here. We say we've been here for a million, a hundred million years. And because of this, you know, we have sacred covenants with the universal elements to defend and protect, you know, the, the other living beings right to clean water, to clean ecosystems. You know, that that's how we manage the land. And so every season, if the, you know, the seasons, our cosmology ties us to the changing of the season. So if we don't do our ceremonies, then the seasons might not change. You know, we might not be gifted the responsibility of life, of living in a very difficult, you know, life. The human condition is extremely difficult, but indigenous nations have developed knowledge systems over multiple millennia that the american public is just now like oh wait a minute they, they have their own ways of knowing what they are who they are and how to get navigate this universe as human beings and so we're hardwired in our dna to defend the sacred sites the waters and then after that is our sovereign rights our treaty rights so we were living on the Standing Rock Reservation in 2016, and I was running for the United States Congress in a very, very, um, you know, radical right state. These, these, uh, you know, they are in lockstep with the radical fringe in this country that caused blood to spill in the United States Capitol January 6th. This is what I mean, that there are forces out there who are still trying to impose a very violent settler colonial practice and mentality. And, and we had to stand up to that at Standing Rock because I was 
living on the Standing Rock Nation, trying to mind my own business, help my wife raise our family. And here comes Dakota Access Pipeline, Kelsey Warren, and says, you know what? We're going to disturb your peace. Your children are not going to be able to know peace anymore because every night they got to go to bed wondering if 500,000 gallons of oil are going to spill into their only drinking source water and cause cancer to not, not only the human beings, but everything that's around there. So the, the voice of the voiceless is sometimes the protest or the civil resistance. And th this is what happened at Standing Rock. And because I was organizing after I, I had lost the election, um, which, you know, I had a, a very slim chance of winning that election anyway. But, you know, when you're in it, you got to convince yourself that you can win. But after I lost, I then joined the Standing Rock Frontline Resistance. And because of my legal knowledge, I wanted to, to give to this struggle a spiritual legal foundation and explain to the world why we were there and why the world, those who are also waking up, are invited to join us. You know, when you talked about being a good relative, that's the that's the substance, the essence of being Lakota. It means to be a good relative. Not and then we're talking with our human relatives, but it's also to to the to the older gods, the sacred elementals that were here long before us. So we're defending that. And, and that's why indigenous peoples are always on the front line because we're like, yo, you're, you're going to destroy my way of life here at line three with all of the wild rice. You're about to destroy the way that I feed my family. And I need this, this these marshes and these 10,000 lakes to be healthy so that we can live. And, and because we take those strong stances, American people are like, look, it, I want, I'm a public land owner too. I want clean water. I don't want big corporations to be able to shove down our throats, whatever their energy policy is, or even sometimes their foreign policy. So if you look at Standing Rock, I would advise you to check out what the private military industrial complex had had done to us the, the way that they violated our rights the way that they brutalized people and it was it was kind of like you know when black light when george floyd was murdered you you saw the different kind of tentacles of that security state but but it's confused now They're, they called me a terrorist out there and my daughter and my wife everyone who was in the resistance now after january 6th it's much more difficult to call us terrorists but we are still at risk because with the Dakota Access Pipeline, I'll, I'll end with this. There is a two women. Jessica Reznicek was sentenced to eight years in prison, federal prison, because of terrorism enhancements. Ruby Montoya is about to, to almost be sentenced here within a couple of months. And we do not want our government to be able to declare those who are defending the sacred and the, the, the healthy, clean ecosystems and waters of our country to be declared terrorists. We, we don't support violence and, and we're, we're, we're looking to build that force and that bridge so that we can no longer be ignored. I think that every time that people stand up for things that are somehow going to negatively impact capitalism, um, that is when those people are deemed terrorists because you're threatening to destroy their capitalism. <laughs> that's, that's what, th th and that's the priority. And we are starting to see it with a whole bunch of different groups. Um, something that I really wanted to talk with you about that we hear get a little play, but not enough, um, is one of the things that happens with these drilling companies when they go in and they build the pipelines. Is the, is the impact it's having on Native women. And I know that there are, a, I don't even know the number, you probably do, of missing Native women. Um, and, and what's happening is these people that are worker people are going into these towns, they're there for whatever temporary periods of time, and they're using it as an opportunity to violate and abuse Native peoples. And because these are vulnerable communities, they tend to get away with it. And right now, I mean, please talk to this, this, there is this huge issue with missing native women that are just gone. 
they're just missing because people are violating them. And I, I just, how, what can we do? We need to get more attention on this. If it was any other group, yeah. I think we'd be hearing more about it. Um, if there was like, if people were kidnapping women from the upper West side of Manhattan and they were just going missing, we'd probably all be like wondering, Oh, what happened to them? So, I mean, this is something that's plaguing me lately about these women. So if you would talk about that, because I know it's connected to the pipeline. Yes. Like I know there's a connection. It's, 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 it's horrible actually to even imagine. And I didn't know as a man that women in general, but indigenous women live their lives differently because of the threat of violent patriarchy. Now, extractive capital, extractive capitalism, coupled with, you know, heteronormative violent patriarchy, that, that is what is causing, and it goes into the way that indigenous women, indigenous people have been portrayed as subhuman, as Saracen, as pagans, as barbarians, and that adds to the to the fetishization, to, to the objectification that that patriarchy is able to execute because of the control of all these the institutions of media law. Uh oh. Frozen screen again. Uh oh. But I have no doubt Chase will be back. But no, this is something that has been bothering me for a long time about the women. Jeffrey, uh, excellent point. That is 100% correct about what did happen. Bismarck, North Dakota is a is a up, uh, middle and upper middle class white community. Yeah. And they didn't want it. No, no, they don't want it in their backyard. So we should just shove it on the reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry, you cut out. So I just, I know that this woman issue is, and, and you're right. And we we talk about it all the time. I don't know an adult yeah. woman that has not been violated. I don't. I don't know if a you, single adult woman that has not been violated. And I know it's exponentially worse for indigenous people. I'll, I'll tell you what, um, you know, if I if I cut out again, maybe we're going to have to run this back when I get to my studio. But I will I will say that. There one in three indigenous females, indigenous women will go missing or will experience sexual violence or will have some sort of violation of their of their person of their body one out of every three i nobody knows the true number of native women who are missing but what we do know is that extractive capitalism and the the concept of man camps promotes and and allows even if it's because it's passive in it it allows man camps to be built in the Bakken oil field. I used to be a judge for the Mandan Hidatsa Arikara Nation, which is choosing to develop their oil resources. And at line three, pipeline workers were actually caught in a trafficking sting. And we, it, it's, it's so, it takes a deeper dive. A good friend of mine named Lissa Yellowbird Chase has a uh, a dateline special i believe it is where she's been on this path of searching for and rescuing missing people and i would i would advise you to kind of you know you you got to do a little bit of a deeper dive into this phenomenon but it, it comes from the way that indigenous peoples have been dehumanized over time and i i know that those forces are, you know, committing violence on indigenous women is part and parcel to committing violence on Mother Earth. It gives people the 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 license to to pr to promote and continue that very, uh, you know, it's a horrific phenomenon that that we're struggling to understand. We're str we're reeling from it. And indigenous women are hardly ever centered. Look at, I mean, rest in peace to Gabby Petito. But you're right about the country and, you know, paying immediate attention because every missing woman deserves that kind of attention. We are living in a very violent, heteronormative patriarchy. But indigenous women, for, for, the, for as much as it's possible, those who 
are in that's why it's so hard to understand why mascots are offensive because you're you we're born into the dynamic of you're either the oppressed or you're part of the former oppressors or the former colonizers and it, and you need that power dynamic it would you would have to imagine adolf hitler or the nazis caricaturizing and forming their mascots out of jewish people and jewish symbols that's that's kind of a way to understand what indigenous peoples are going through when when americans are doing the same thing i just i want to say that so so it's you got to try as hard as you can to graduate from your own what you grow and that's just how i try to become a better bridge builder and a, a better communicator but that this is a, a horrific epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women missing and murdered indigenous two spirits all of these demographics have been targeted and are reeling and 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 we just we cannot stop talking about them thanks for watching if you want to support our mission to transform politics into service please like this video subscribe follow us on social media and consider joining our patreon where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content links are in the description peace out